Shalom, grace, and welcome to this week's edition of Peninea Torah, Pearls of Torah with Yeshiva Shuvu, Amal Sur, Kabeza Perez, and this week's Torah portion is Parashat Vayakhel. This week's Torah portion is found in the book of Shemot, Exodus chapter 35, and it focuses on the construction of the tabernacle in the wilderness and all of the details that were in the construction of the tabernacle as well as the voluntary service that was done by the children of Israel who were participating in this construction along with Moses and those who were appointed by the spirit of Adonai. We begin our parasha in the study that we will be focusing on today in verse 21 of chapter 35 where it says the following, Then everyone came whose heart was stirred and everyone whose spirit was willing. And they brought Adonai's offering for the work of the tabernacle of meeting, for all its service and for the holy garments. Now, what's interesting about this particular verse is that their hearts were stirred. This is something that's slightly different from previous places where it's mentioned something similar about their hearts being motivated. So we're going to go and see what Tur HaAroch has to say about the particular words that are used in the Hebrew language that are different in this passage in comparison to other passages previous. In Tur HaAroch, the following is explained. Every man whose heart inspired him came. Nachmanides draws our attention to the change in expression here in connection with the donations as stated in chapter 25 verse 2. The Torah had described the individual's motivation with the words, Asher nidvenu libo, whose heart motivates him. Whereas here, we are told about a different level of generosity, enthusiasm. Asher nesao libo, whose heart inspired him. Men who had no training in performing any of these tasks were inspired and suddenly were able to perform tasks they had never considered themselves capable of performing. Artisans who were skilled in performing tasks but had never trained others to do so now became skilled at teaching their art. And men or women who had never displayed skill with their hands were suddenly inspired to do so. They came to Moses volunteering to perform the tasks that were required. First, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that their hearts had to be involved. Before they were able to receive any gifts from the spirit of Adonai that would enable them to perform the tasks, their hearts had to be in the right state. They had to have the right kavanah, the right intention. Now, as noted by Nachmanides and Tuha Aroch, previously, the word that's associated with to volunteer, with the root word of the Nadav, Nun, Dalet, and Bet, is what's used to describe the motivation of their heart. But here, the root word is a Sin and an Aleph, or with the Nun and the Sin and the Aleph, which means to carry, and is translated here as inspired. So this is another level of inspiration and motivation that their hearts are willing and wanting to participate in serving Adonai. And this is a lesson for us that when our hearts are willing, when we have the right motivation, when we're inspired for the right reasons, even if we are not able or maybe we're just weak and don't have the strength in particular areas, Adonai will enable us by His Spirit. He will give us the skills necessary to fulfill the task. All we have to do is have a willing heart and the right intention. And so, how is this skill or this capacity given to us? It's by the power of the Spirit. And we see this as we move down to verse... 31, where it says, in our same chapter, it says, And he has filled him, referring to Betzalel, 
with the spirit of Elohim in wisdom and understanding, in knowledge and all manner of workmanship. So it's always been by the spirit of Adonai. Those of us who know Messiah know that it's not just the leadership and those chosen few among the people of Adonai who are given the power of the spirit. Once the coming of Messiah arrived, we have all been given access to the same spirit without measure. So now, regarding this, we have the words of Rav Shaul that explains to us in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry. Let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Each and every one of us is given different gifts once our hearts are prepared to receive the spirit of Adonai and we have the right intention, we will be enabled with the right gifts that suit each and every one of us. And when we receive these gifts, we got to put them to work. And so regarding this, Rabbeinu Bachia also staying in line with the things that were revealed through Nachmanides says the following, that according to Nachmanides, the level we know as Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, is superior to the level known as Nebuah, prophecy. According to his view, the levels starting with the highest to the lowest are the Ruach HaKodesh being the highest, the Holy Spirit, Nebuah, prophecy, Urim Tumim, the way that the high priest was able to communicate through the Urim and the Tumim, and the Bat Kol, the heavenly voice. According to his view, the level of spirituality we call Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, is derived from Hamakor HaElyon, the supreme original source. Now this highest level of spirituality in connection with our Creator, that in times past was only for those chosen among the leadership of the children of Israel, through Messiah is now accessible to everyone. The highest level of spirituality is accessible to anybody if they only open their hearts to receive from Adonai with the right intention to do the work. We do not receive grace through our work, but once we receive the grace, we are enabled to do the work and we must do the work. And so, Rabbi Nubachia, continues and says regarding Exodus 35 31 concerning Bet-Salel it is written he filled him with the divine spirit which manifested in wisdom you will also find in the Sefer Yetzirah 1 9 that Chokhmah wisdom is referred to as Ruach Elohim Chaim the spirit of the living God and listed as first and foremost in a list of spiritual attainments. Through the Messiah Yeshua, we are able to have the highest level of spirituality in connection with our Creator. But the purpose of this, at least one of the main purposes of this, is in order to do the work of the Kingdom. And so, Rabbi Nubakia continues and says, All the various spiritual attainments by man are also traced back to specifically the Shekhinah. And I refer to you the previous videos where we know that the Shekhinah, the divine manifestation of the presence of Adonai within the created world, is none other than the spirit of the Messiah himself. So from the very beginning, access to this intimacy and spirit with our Creator has always been through the spirit of the Messiah. And so we see in the Renewed Covenant, in the book of Titus, chapter 3, beginning at verse 4, the following. 
But when the kindness and the love of Elohim, our Savior toward man, appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, it didn't originate by our works, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Yeshua Messiah, our Savior. The Messiah is always and has always been the access to the spirit of Adonai. That having been justified by his grace, we're justified by his chesed, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in Elohim should be careful to maintain good works. Often we hear these teachings in just half of the passage, the part that says we're not saved by the works, but the very same passage that tells us that we're not saved by these works reaffirms to us that once we have been saved by this grace, it is in order to continue to do the good works. And so, moving down to chapter 37 in our parasha, it says, beginning at verse 1, Then Betzalel made the ark. And the word made is the same word for work. Ya'as. Going down to verse... 7 through 9, it says, He also made two cherubim, two cherubim of beaten gold. He made them of one piece at the two ends of the mercy seat. One cherub at one end on this side, the other cherub at the other end on that side. He made the cherubim at the two ends of one piece, the mercy seat, with the mercy seat. The cherubim spread out their wings above and covered the mercy seat with their wings they faced one another the faces of the cherubim were toward the mercy seat now what's the significance of the ark the mercy seat and the cherubim we turn to midrash tanhuma which explains the following vayaas betzalel et haaron and may same word for work betzalel the ark you do not find that Salel's name associated with any vessel made for the sanctuary other than the ark. All the other work and all the other implements were made at his suggestion upon his advice. Why did he make an exception in the work of the ark by doing it himself? Because it was to be a shadow of the Holy One. Silo Shel Hakadosh Baruch Hu, blessed be He, in which He would compress His Shekhinah. The word for compress here is the word Metzamtzem from the word Simtsum. And if you're not familiar with this concept, the contraction of the word of Adonai, which was used to create all that exists, I refer you to Parashah Bereshit, where this concept is expressed in detail in connection with the living word of Adonai being his vessel for creation. And this living word is none other than the spirit of Messiah. Now, he limited himself in the form of his Shekhinah, according to Midrash Tanhuma, And it continues and says, that is why he called Betzalel in the shadow of God, is the name of Betzalel, the meaning, to make a shadow of the Holy One, blessed be He. Where? Between the cherubim, as it said, and there I will meet with you, and I will speak with thee from between the two cherubim. Now, what is the significance of this? We see Rabbi Nubachia tells us concerning the tabernacle that the words, it was made on the day Moses completed erecting the tabernacle, are reminiscent of Proverbs 27, verse 18, which we used in our parasha last week, which says, He who tends the fig tree will eat its fruit. He who waits on his master will be honored. And keep in mind 
The word for he who tends, referring to the fig tree, is the notzer, the same root word as the netzer, which is one of the names of the Messiah. God does not withhold the appropriate reward for any creature. If a man has toiled and devoted his best efforts to something worthy, he will be rewarded. This is why we find that in Psalms 30 verse 1, it credits the temple to David rather than to his son Solomon who had spent seven years building it. At the inauguration, the hymn commences with the words, a song for David, a song for the dedication of the house. You will observe a similar phenomenon with the tabernacle, seeing that Moses had devoted so much effort to see the tabernacle built, had assembled it, erected it. We find here that though Bezalel was the chief architect and executive carrying out the construction, that the Torah speaks about the day Moses completed the tabernacle. As long as the tabernacle had not been erected, the various destructive forces commonly known as demons had free reign on earth. When Moses had ascended Mount Sinai, he recited Psalms 91. Which says, Yosheb Beseter Elion Betzel Shaddai Yit Lonan. Whoever dwells in the shelter, the same word for hidden, of the Most High, abides in the protection, the same word for shadow, of Shaddai. The shadow of the Shekhinah, the presence, the word of Adonai that was symbolized between the two cherubim was the focus of the artwork done by Bezalel. But this was a team effort. And Moses himself is being the one who is given credit as having done the work. We do this as a team, Bezalel, Moses, all of those artists who were involved were as one. And each one receives from the blessings of the work that they are doing, but the work of their hands symbolize the shadow of the heavenly things and point us to the Shekinah of Adonai. Now, it's very interesting that the Midrash is telling us that the demons had free reign on earth until the tabernacle of Adonai was present. We see something very similar in the Renewed Covenant. We know in the book of Yohanan, also known as John, that the word of Adonai tabernacled amongst us. And when this word, Yeshua Messiah, was amongst us, authority was given over the demonic forces. And it's the same principle that's established here. Once the Shekinah of Adonai was able to be dwelling within this tabernacle that Adonai allowed the children of Israel to participate in constructing, there was no longer room for the forces of darkness to be in any place of authority, not when the presence of Adonai is amongst us. And so we continue in the Midrash and see that it states up until the day of the tabernacle being erected, there had still been a tug of war between Elohim and the people, dating all the way back to the golden calf incident, when the people took from their material blessings and constructed an idol in rebellion to Adonai. Now, what's the significance of the tabernacle coming into place and rectifying the sin of the golden calf? We see in Likute Mohoran an explanation given to us of why the tabernacle had to be erected specifically in response to the sin of the golden calf. It says the following, Sedaka, righteous charity, is a rectification for the covenant. Blemishing the covenant is defined as a person having been required to provide something for holiness for that place which he was to have provided for, but instead 
His having removed those provisions from there and drawn them, God forbid, to some other place. Therefore, the rectification is through charity, through tzedakah, through righteous giving. Through this, he again provides for the holiness and is thereby rectified. And what is being referred to here is that the materials that were used for the construction of the golden calf were from the very same materials that were given to the children of Israel that in the future were supposed to be given for the work of the things pertaining to Adonai. But they used the things that were supposed to belong to Adonai for things that belong to the other side, to the adversary. And so the Midrash continues and states, this is the aspect of the men accompanied the women in Exodus 35, 22, which is mentioned in connection with the donations for the tabernacle. The aspect of union that was made through the charity donated to the tabernacle. This is what rectified in part the sin of the golden calf. We know that ultimately the ultimate rectification comes through Messiah alone, but there is still work to be done and we still have to do our part. And in this instant, they had to give what was given to them already. What we have, our resources, all that we have already comes from Adonai. All that is good comes from him anyways, but he allows us to make the choice to give it to him or to use it for our own selfish desires, which ultimately belong to the other side, to the adversary. And so the significance of the sin of the golden calf was that it was done with things that should have been used for the service of Adonai. So now we have this rectification when the children of Israel are willingly, from a motivated and a well-intended heart, are giving to the construction of the tabernacle of Hashem. And not only that, it's very significant that men and women had to work together in this. It was not just the men. The women had to be involved. All of Israel had to be involved. And referring to the significance of the women and the men together, we see something very beautiful in connection to what we were saying earlier with the two cherubim. Why the two cherubim? What's the significance of Bezalel? the name meaning in the shadow of Elohim, in the shadow of El, why was he specifically with the power of the Holy Spirit given the task of making the ark which was supporting the two cherubim? And so in the Talmud tractate Yoma 54a, Rav Ketina says, when the people of Israel would ascend from one of, uh, for one of the pilgrimage festivals, the priest would roll up the curtain for them and show them the cherubim, which were clinging to one another and say to them, see how you are beloved before Elohim, like the love of a man and a woman. The two cherubim symbolize the Holy One, blessed be he and the people of Israel. Throughout the renewed covenant, we see many examples of the wedding, the covenant between Adonai and ourselves is like the love of a man and a woman. We, the body of Messiah, incorporated with the people of Israel, all of Israel is the bride of Adonai through the Messiah. And so we see throughout the prophets in the book of Isaiah chapter 54, verse six to eight, it says the following, Seek out on I while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts. Let him return to Adonai. Excuse me, that's in uh, chapter 55. In chapter 54, we see the following. For Adonai has called you like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit like a youthful wife when you were refused says your elohim for a moment for a mere moment i have forsaken you but with great mercies i will gather you with the little wrath i hid my face 
The hidden face is none other than the spirit of Messiah. With a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on you, says Adonai your Redeemer. Any type of replacement theology or lie which negates the restoration of the entire house of Israel is contrary to the Hebrew scriptures. All of Israel will be saved, the natural branches and the grafted branches. And so we see in the book of Revelation a parallel to this. In chapter 19, beginning at verse 7, it says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. How has the wife, the body of Messiah, all of the people of Israel, how are they made ready? The following verse tells us. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen are the righteous works of those who are set apart. We're not saved by our righteous works, but those of us who have been redeemed correspond with righteous works. We have been set apart to do righteous works, to glorify our Father in the name of the Messiah and bring others closer to Him. And so, going back to Tractate Yoma 54a, Rav Nachman says, the people of Israel were exiled after the, the destruction of the temple. They are compared to a woman divorced from her husband. And when a woman is divorced, she returns to her original beloved but reserved state. She is once again modest and does not reveal herself. Likewise, the divine presence, the Shekhinah, the hidden face, will remain hidden until the glory of the temple is restored. And how is the glory of the temple, the tabernacle, the dwelling place of Adonai, restored? How is it restored? Midrash Tanhuma gives us an example of many different passages from the scripture. Returning to Proverbs 27 verse 18, the Midrash says, Solomon said it well in Proverbs 27 18, the one who tends or guards the fig tree, the notzer, the netzer branch, which is the name of Messiah, shall eat its fruit. So also you find in the case of the tabernacle, when everyone devoted their lives to it and made the tabernacle, all of Israel volunteered. The women spun the goat's hair, as in Exodus 36 8, and similarly, all the wise hearted ones among the workers made the tabernacle. And likewise, in Exodus 36 verse 1, Bezalel and Oholiab and all the wise hearted ones do all that Adonai has commanded. However, they only did so because Moses devoted his life to the tabernacle. It's a team effort. So that it would be made just as the Holy One has shown him in the mountain, referring to Exodus 25, 40. Observe and make them like by the means of the pattern. Thus Moses went and devoted his life so that they would not go astray. We must also devote our lives so that our brethren do not go astray. It is therefore written in Exodus 39, as the work, as, as the work and behold, they had done it. Then Moses blessed them. And with what blessing did he bless them? He said to them, may the Shekhinah, the divine presence of Adonai within the created world, dwell in the work of of your hands. The Shekhinah, the spirit of the Messiah, is revealed by the works of our hands. How are others to see the Messiah in this world if not through us and the righteous works that we are to do, not by our strength, but by His Spirit who dwells within us? And so, this refers us to the Tehillim, the book of Psalms. In Psalms 90, verse 13 through 17, it says the following. 
return at our nine. How long? And have compassion on your servants. Oh, satisfy us early with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days in which you have afflicted us, the years in which we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants and your glory to their children. And let the beauty of Adonai, our Elohim, be upon us and establish the work of our hands for us. The work of our hands benefit us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And this prayer is said, this portion is said throughout the Sephardic Sidurim, our prayer books, that Hashem blessed the works of our hands. But as we have seen thus far, the works of our hands reveal the Shekhinah, the divine presence of Adonai here on earth, which is none other than the spirit of the Messiah, Yeshua. And so we see in the book of Ephesians, Rav Shaul explains further in chapter 4 the importance of working together in order for Messiah to be manifested. In verse 7 through 13, it says the following. But each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Messiah's gift. It's been the spirit of Messiah given the gifts to do the work. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended. What does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. He who descended is also the one who ascended for above all the heavens that might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be emissaries, some to be prophets, some as evangelists and some as shepherds and teachers for the equipping of those who are set apart. For what? For the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Messiah, till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of Elohim, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Messiah, till all, till everyone, come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of Elohim until all of Israel is able to see the Messiah through the works of our hands. We have a lot of work to do. And that is the message of Ayyakel that we continue to reveal the Messiah through the works of our hands. Those of us who are the different parts of the tabernacle the temple, the dwelling place of the Spirit of Hashem here on earth. It is through our works that others are able to see the face of Messiah, who is the visible aspect of Adonai in the heavens. Shavuot